Hello, my name is Victoria and in this video we'll explore how much to charge your clients for a custom website development service and what you should consider before determining your pricing strategy. Let's go! Whether you are a freelancer or a business owner, pricing is one of the most important factors to take care of. It's most likely the first thing a client will ask before hiring a professional to take on a project. Your price should strike the right balance between the value you provide and your client's needs. Yes, your clients should get a high-quality service, but you must also ensure that the price covers your production costs and doesn't undervalue your skills. Before we continue, keep in mind that the prices in this video are not one-size-fits-all solution. Every project is different and there are various elements that will affect the pricing, which will we discuss later. But first, let's see some general price points that can serve as a reference to determine your web design pricing. Let's start with $1,000. At this price point, your client can get a website with a pre-made design using a WordPress theme or a website builder template. It will involve minimal customization and only have a few simple web pages. This option best suits personal sites or websites for informational purposes, such as a simple portfolio website or a landing page. The next price point falls within a range of two to $4,000. With this option, your clients will still get website design that's based on a pre-made theme, but with more customization. Plus, you can offer clients more pages or custom elements than the previous price range. Price point number three is between five to seven thousand dollars. This price range is for clients who demand a fully custom design, which means the layout won't be template-based, as you will design it from scratch. It's also possible to include e-commerce features for a small number of products and membership functionality. Price range number four is above $10,000. This includes custom code for specific features, such as a search function. It's suitable for clients wanting an e-commerce store or a large-scale blog with many content pages. Next is over $20,000. This price range covers websites with complex e-commerce functionality. It can have hundreds of products, variations, and categories, which will involve hundreds, if not thousands, of photos and media files. Sites like these will take months to develop as they contain a lot of content. And the last price range here is more than $50,000. This goes for large-scale websites with many complex and detailed requirements, such as comprehensive e-commerce sites, enterprise-level business sites, and knowledge bases. Websites in this category may also have various complex or unique design requirements, such as 3D elements and dynamic content. Remember to carefully fine-tune your price calculations based on your clients' requests, your capabilities, and your experience. If you're a beginner, you might think that some of these rates are too high. But remember that the business have dedicated budgets for necessary expenses like website creation, which is an important marketing tool in the digital era. Also, know that the prices I've shared are upfront costs paid once, for the website creation service only. If you also provide ongoing services like website maintenance and support, clients should pay an additional monthly fee. We'll talk about that shortly. Now let's talk about the seven elements you should consider before deciding how much to charge for your website. The first one is the website type and features. Ask your client what they will use their website for. Is it to showcase their business information, sell products or services, create an online forum or something else? For example, suppose your client wants to create an e-commerce site. In that case, they will need a payment system, promotion and discount code capabilities, and reliable security features to protect both the companies and their customers' data. The client might also go beyond selling products and need extra features such as membership function to help attract customers. The second element to consider is project's complexity and scale. This one relates to the level of customization and the amount of content the client expects. Ask whether your client wants a fully custom website in which the design and code are built from scratch or they are fine with using a pre-made theme or template. Customizing a pre-made theme is a great middle ground for clients on a budget. If they're okay with the pre-made design, double check whether the free option facility 
fits their needs or if they should opt for the premium version instead. After that, check how many web pages they request. Some clients only require a basic five page website that includes a home page, an about page, a contact page, a products or services page, and a blog page. But there are also a large website with complex information architecture that require many pages. This type of site should be priced higher than those with fewer pages. Next, clarify with your client whether they need you to provide content or not. If yes, charge an extra fee for content creation, on top of the course service price that covers web design and development. It's also important to take into account how much time you will spend on creating the website, and how many revisions for the design and development your client will be entitled to. Next are production costs. These cover any direct and indirect costs that you will face from creating a finished product or providing a service. When creating a website, the minimum production costs include purchasing a domain name, a web hosting plan, and security features like SSL certificate. If you use Hostinger to build clients' websites, you can get a domain and SSL certificate for free. If your client wants to use premium themes or plugins, or if they request additional services like professional photography or animation, add those factors into the pricing equation as well. Production costs also include overhead expenses or the costs needed to run the business. For a brick and mortar company, this may be rent and insurance, but in your case, as a web designer and developer, you can count the software and hardware needed to build the code and create the design as overhead costs. Another element you should consider is client's business type and size. Are the individual client a small to medium business or a large company? Is the business commercial or non-profit? And what industry are they in? For instance, say your client is a camper van company with an international target market. Their website's purpose will differ from, let's say, a charity organization's website. For businesses, websites need to generate sales and encourage customers to make a purchase. On the other hand, a nonprofit website focus will be on sharing knowledge and raising awareness. You should also consider the client's country or city of residence. That way, you can provide a price point that is accurate as possible to the web development market in that given area. Next, consider the website's anticipated return on investment or ROI for the client. Websites with e-commerce functionality will likely bring more revenue since they are essentially built to generate money. With that in mind, you can calculate different price points for each website type to cover all the solutions your clients need. This is where you can charge extra by offering ongoing services like content SEO. Or you can guarantee clients a great performing website with outstanding core web vital scores that can drive more traffic due to an excellent user experience experience. Next, don't forget to consider your skill level and experience. If you are still new in the web design and development field, you might have to charge lower rates to begin with. Then slowly increase your rate as you develop more skills, build an excellent portfolio and have a solid reputation for quality work. If you get notable clients in a particular industry, make sure to showcase that on your portfolio site. It will serve as a social proof for your potential clients, which can boost your reputation even more. Lastly consider what your competitors charge for similar work. If you work on websites for lifestyle brands, try to find other web designers or agencies that work in a similar segment. If you're more flexible or you are just starting out and want to try working on projects from various industries, look for competitors that do the same. Keep in mind that you don't need to charge the same service rates as your competitors, but use their rates to estimate how much your target clients are willing to pay. Now that we covered estimated price range and what to consider before deciding on your service rates, let's talk about the various pricing methods to charge your clients. First up is hourly rate. 
where you bill clients for the total number of hours you spend working on a project. For example, you can inform a client that a very simple website will take 3 hours to make and your rate is $100 per hour. This pricing method works best for freelancers and project-based work. Note that charging an hourly basis should not be an excuse to work ineffectively, just to get more hours. If you work unnecessarily slow, you will build a bad reputation which will eventually make it hard for you to find clients. As for the price range, a beginner web designer's service rates generally start around $50 to $100 per hour, while more experienced web developers can charge around $80 to $200 per hour. Keep in mind that the hourly rates for web design, web development, and combination of both should be different. The number of hours should also be agreed upon during initial dealing process, but it's also possible to adjust later if, for example, there are additional requests from the client. However, things might get tricky if the actual work takes longer than you or your client expected. The key is to always communicate the project's progress in detail and be transparent to your clients if you find any blockages so they can understand why the process took longer than estimated. The next pricing method is project-based. This is the most common cost structure. You set a fixed one-time cost for a project based on the seven key elements we discussed. With this pricing model, you can establish a flat rate for the entire project as agreed upon you and your client. Or you can create several packages that your clients can choose based on their needs and budget. For example, you offer three packages, which are basic, business, and e-commerce. The basic package includes one year of hosting a domain name, a CMS-based website, a team-based web design with moderate customization, and all the core features for a simple informational website. The business package includes all the services included in the basic plan, but offers a fully custom web design. It also has more web pages and more page design variations. And for the e-commerce package, the client gets everything the business package has, plus e-commerce functionality like payment solutions. The advantage of a project-based pricing model is that your clients can get the exact services they need at the price that fits their budget. And you, as a professional service provider, can accurately estimate the time and resources required for a project of a certain level of complexity. A possible downside of this pricing model is that you might charge too little from underestimating the complexity of a project, so make sure to do your research to ensure pricing accuracy. The last pricing method is the monthly retainer fee. You bill your clients each month for ongoing services such as website maintenance, SEO, and hosting management on top of the one-time cost for the website itself. You can offer these ongoing services as optional add-ons for website owners that need help maintaining their sites to optimize performance and stay on top of their business. Your client can also choose just one service or multiple services if needed. At the end of the day, always remember the value you provide for your clients. Share your rate with them confidently and if they oppose, that's when you can negotiate to find a win-win solution for both parties. However, don't underestimate yourself by thinking there's no way your client will pay a certain fee. If you can convince them of the benefit your service will bring, clients will pay for what's needed. I hope this video helps you figure out how much to charge for your website. If you have other tips or solutions on determining optimal web design pricing, share them in the comment section below to help fellow viewers. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it and be sure to share the video with your friends who you think will enjoy it too. See you next time!